Remember that song we just sang? It's so vital at this point in time. New wine. New wine. We need new wine. And there's going to be a crushing to get new wine. You don't make a diamond without being crushed cold. Amen? The body is being crushed by God. It's being purged. It's being pruned. There's going to be challenges that we don't like. There's going to be things that we need to break tradition of. Because we've inherited so much tradition. You know, one of the things that the Holy Spirit showed me, he showed me when Jesus walked up to them, to the disciples, he said, follow me. Follow me. You know what they did? They dropped everything. They left their homes, their families, their children. They left their businesses. They left everything to follow Jesus. But Jesus rewarded them. At the beginning, it didn't seem logical in their minds. <laughs> it didn't seem common sense in their minds. Because their minds had been deceived for so long with religion, doctrines of demons, the love of money, survival, family traditions, all kinds of things that were implemented by the Babylonian system in multiple ways in different levels, thinking everything is just how it's supposed to be. And Jesus showed up and said, no, that's not how it's supposed to be anymore. Things have got to change. When Elijah threw his mantle on Elijah, and he said, come and follow me. And he went back home to his family, and he said, hold on a second. Let me go say goodbye to mom, dad, and family. And what did he say to him? What have I done to you? And then he got it. Oh, yeah, right. Wait a minute. What am I doing? I'm going to miss family gathering tonight. I'm going to miss dinner with the grandchildren and everything else. Wait a minute. But Jesus said, come. Come. And he got it. Wealthy man had everything. Killed the oxen. Destroyed his plow and offered it all up. And then he followed Elijah. You know what his, re his reward was? The second mantle. And that's what God is trying to reward us with, more of his presence. And many people will miss it because they're not willing to deny themselves. See, some people are willing to deny themselves when they want to, when it's convenient. But God doesn't challenge us in convenience. He challenges us when it is the roughest. Does everybody understand that? Yeah, but I made plans. That's when we're challenged. He's saying, will you follow me or your plans? Will you follow me or your traditions? This is where the crushing is now. See, we get crushed in afflictions, but most of it is not in sicknesses and diseases. Does, that, does everybody understand it? Most of it is within in that areas of things that we hold so dear to us. Does everybody get this? Go to Luke 14 for a moment. Verse 25. Now great multitudes went with Jesus, and he turned. In other words, they were following him. And he turned, stopped, and he turned around, and he said to them all, If any one of you... Anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother, his wife, his children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. See, now a disciple is a servant of the Lord. Amen? It's a servant of the Lord. There's many people that serve in the kingdom, but they're not disciples. Does everybody understand this? There's a difference. 
He said, whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it. Lest after you have laid the foundation and is not able to finish and all who see it begin to what? Mock him. Saying this man began to build but was not able to finish. Go to 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. Paul writes this and says, Or do you not know that you, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Oh, how we easily compromise and drift to the place to do our will again. How easily we drift. We forget. Wait a minute. It's not my life. Look at this next verse. For you were what? You were what? Bought. You were bought and paid for. We are bought and paid for. At a price, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So we don't have a life. It's amazing how we try to fight for it, compromise for it, shortcut for it. And forgetting that we gave our life to the King of glory, to his purpose, to his will. What's the purpose also? Now, we were called to battle, amen? Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny to infiltrate the world system. But you can't do that without building the temple in the house of God. The house of God. Remember, David's heart was to build the house of God. That was his heart's desire. So there's actually two responsibilities we are involved in. That's building this house and God's house. Amen? Go to Psalm 19, verse 12. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Oh, hallelujah. Let me have, let them not have dominion over me. Presumptuous, assuming things. Assuming. Well, I just figured out. I just figured, you know, whatever. That's why the word Lord says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and things will be added to you. But also, acknowledge him in all of your ways. Lord, what do you think about this? See, many people make plans and never even consider and then the Lord steps back. Because they forget that they given their they don't have a life. They've given their life. They've been bought. We've been bought. And until we get to that point where we constantly and disciplinedly and routinely acknowledge him. We'll never le reach that level of full trust. Anyone want to in here want to be not, not not have God trust you he, we, we must reach a level of full trust not just partial amen not just partial we want to reach that full trust level with the Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus I'm going to go to another scripture here I think hallelujah this is why we're going through what we're going through Welcome to the crushing. We call it the burn. Amen. <laughs> and the other thing that happens is if we don't learn it the first time, we recycle. 
Some people have been recycling for years. You'd think they'd be dizzy by now. Praise God. Now, we, have, we are in a time right now that it's called Noah's, Noah's cycle. Noah's cycle. Not bicycle, cycle. Hello? Noah didn't need a bicycle. He needed a boat. Noah's cycle. And we're in that time, in that pattern right now, where things recycle. And, and um, let's go to uh, Genesis 6 for a moment. Verse 1. came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and the daughters were born to them. And the sons of God, known as angels, saw the daughters of men, but they were, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, and all whom they chose. So these fallen angels put on flesh, went into the women, and produced offsprings. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God, the same angels, came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, they were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continued. Now, you got to remember, these Nephilim race, these offsprings, took over the earth for approximately 400 years. And in this, these entities, which I call entities because these were a mixture, these were demonic spirits in human hosts that were fulfilling the lusts of the flesh in everything that they did. And there was giants and so forth. And the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds in the, of the air, for I am sorry that I made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah, and was a, Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. Who else walked with God? Enoch. Amen? Those are the only two that said they walked with God. That's why I believe that they're also the two witnesses. I mean, not Noah and Elijah. I mean, Moses and Elijah will come in that. Because uh, Enoch and Moses also walked with God. And God put Moses to death, but he sent him. He let him die there, and then the angel of the Lord came and took Moses' body. Amen? And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt. The earth also was corrupt before God. Is the earth cor corrupt now? Yeah. And the earth was filled with violence. Is it filled with violence now? So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark. Hello. Make yourself a way of a what? Escape. Again, these same entities that possess these human bodies now possess seats of position in high places of authority globally. These same entities that were there then now have taken possession in high places of authority globally. They've been in the, 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 in the, the process of slowly infiltrating every position possible, killing humanity and enslaving them in vengeance of what God did to them in the flood. 
Does everybody understand something? Does everybody get this? This is so vitally important. This is why they're out to depopulate and destroy humanity. They want vengeance. When God killed them, flooded them, their spirits took, these entities took possession of other human bodies because they had one. In Romans chapter 1, in verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever and ever. What was the creature? The creature is known as the beast. In other words, they began to serve the fallen ones, the fallen angels. Lucifer, the beast, the creature, not the creator. Amen? They knew God by the flood of Noah <laughs> because they became servants of the beast. And they are still servants of the beast right now. That's why everything is associated with the mark of the beast. There are symbols. There's music, there's videos, the media, everything. Everything you look at is associated. They have 666 somewhere. There's something going on. The height of, of the many the uh, uh, architectural projects and the buildings in, the, uh, uh, in the Washington and so forth. Everything is associated with a 666 number. Even your um, uh, digital, your binary codes and things you purchase, the last numbers are 666. Everything is associated with the mark of the beast. And even people that have been jabbed with that received a mark of the beast. It's a marker. There are many markers of the beast. Many people are dying left and right. There's a two-year span on life when they've received that, unless they repent for what they've taken. Now they're proving it constantly. I was watching a documentary, and they have filmed so many people dying all over the place on sports, football fields, basketball courts, tennis courts, all over. Doctors, people talking, news media just falling out. Some of these people, it's affecting them so badly. There, there's many videos of them looking at something, and they begin to turn and, and, and turn around and turn around, and, and they start swinging at something. And the next thing you know, they're paralyzed, and they fall out and die. All because they've received the marker. Now that they're saying, in fact, many countries are saying, do not give them this. Don't give it to them. And now, of course, they're going to give it another label. Well, it's you don't know what the heck's in it. You can't take nothing no more because they're out to kill you. And you have to be an idiot to get it. And if you have been an idiot and got it, you better repent or you're going to die. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? Go to Matthew 24. In this documentary, 
is that in the liver, it begins to change an individual's DNA. It changes their DNA. Think about this. Why do you think they're trying to promote kids that are four years old to make a choice of what sex they want? And they want to give them a... I mean, this is evil and wicked and demonic all over the world. Again, many countries are saying, no more. No more. Even Russia is calling the United States Biden administration a satanic organization. Hallelujah. Matthew 24, verse 36. Everybody okay? It says, but of the day and the hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Let me tell you, there's an event that nobody knows that's going to happen. Not even the prophets have been, they will not be notified of it. It is a mystery of God. There's an event that's getting ready to happen, and no one's going to know. Other things have been prophesied that we know things are gathering, things are happening, you know, so forth. But there's an event that's going to happen that nobody knows, only God Almighty. And he says this, verse 37, but as the what? Days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Now you got to remember something. How is God going to come? God is first going to come. Jesus is going to come through the body of Christ. This will be a part of the early and latter rain and the second mantle being released. He's going to come first through the body of Christ. That's why the body of Christ must be purged. Not everyone will receive the second mantle. Only those who are dead. Because the mantle is to bring life. Does everybody get it? It's to bring what? Life. You must be dead to yourself. You must be willing to do whatever it takes to maintain this temple and build the house of the Lord. Then two men will be in a field, one will be taken, another and another left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, another will be left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know the hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house, what house? Your house and the house of the Lord. Had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be what? broken into it. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. See, many people have compromised and allowed their house to be broken into. What does the Bible say? That the spirits come back seven times, even stronger. I was talking with an individual today, and a sweet family of God, woman of God, and they were sharing me certain things that were happening, and I, I released a word from the Lord, and she said, man, that's everything God has been telling her. She said, I can't tell you what happened. Our church was 200, 300. We're down to five. Five. Five people. Five people because the pastor turned left. Think about this. Turned left. Be money, 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 money. The love of money. Look, there's nothing wrong with money, but having money, loving money is a different thing. Because if you are uh, having money for the kingdom is a total different thing than the love of money. Amen? Because people live for money. When you and I, BC, we live to, for money. We were servants of the beast of the money system. Disappointed. Couldn't believe it. Hallelujah. 
Noah's cycle is cycle recycling now. Noah's recycle. That's what we're in right now. And 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, that the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were disobedient, when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls were saved through water. <laughs> eight souls were saved through water. There is also an antitype, which now saves us, a baptism, not the removal of filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers have been made subject to him. Eight entered the ark. Eight is a new beginning number. Hallelujah. Eight. We are what we call a triple eight which is September 24th, begins a vengeance of our God. It is a time pattern. And Matthew 25, in verse 1. And the kingdom of heaven shall be likened ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil, no present with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then those ten virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, no, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself, because you cannot use someone else's oil. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with them to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Again, in this, the door was shut, just like the ark. The door was shut, and it was over with. This is what's going to happen again, because we are now in the Noah's recycle. It's a Noah cycle. Same thing that happened during Noah's time will happen again. It won't be with a flood. There's a flood of the enemy, but it won't be the water flood. But those same entities, the door will be shut. And those who are following those, the door will be shut to them. Remember, the oil is a representation of God's presence. See, the Bible says the letter kills and the spirit brings what? Life. Those, uh, those who are bound by the letter, but not by the spirit. Because the Spirit leads. And those who are led by the Spirit of God are known as sons of God. That's a total difference. And see, your inner man, your inner spirit, you should be able to discern those who are of the letter and those who are of the Spirit. Why? So you don't follow someone that's not of the Spirit. 
because they'll mislead you. Oh, they can call scriptures and deceive you. Even the devil knows the Bible. Amen. Oh, they know the letter inside out. I've been studying the word for years. That's a bummer. You need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Then the world will be alive. And you'll have peace, joy, and righteousness. Peace, joy, and righteousness. Peace, joy, and righteousness. Not in the letter, in the spirit. Hello. Oh, glory. The door shut, just like the ark. You know, I'll, there are things that are, that are things that have shut, okay? Things that are shut to the wicked right now. But if you take it, if you, it, everything is turning. September, uh, which is the new year, September 24th, 25th. Amen? Feast of uh, Trumpets, new year. Everything's turning. Ten days after that, it's the Feast of Atonement. So if you look at a, a large aircraft carrier that's out in the ocean and needs to make a U-turn, it's making a turn, but it doesn't turn automatically. It has a process of time before it can turn around and come back. This is where we're at right now. We're in that turn. And it's going to eventually come back. In these next couple months, you're going to see the world change. The world will change. It's changing now. We're, we're not seeing the fullness of it behind many closed doors. It's changing. And it'll be exposed more and more and more. The news media will eventually begin to crumble. Banks are beginning to sell out all their bonds and so forth. Because right now things are changing. There's the global organizations that are one world order, satanic realm. And there are the national people that are for their country, not for one world order. There's a big difference. Amen? Now, I'm going to go somewhere else. Hallelujah. Go to Jeremiah 51. In verse 6, Flee from the midst of Babylon. Babylon is the world system, the money market system, the Antichrist system. And everyone save his life. <laughs> Do not be cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He shall recompense her. Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand. Now, that means this, at one time, God was using Babylon. Now, I want you to think about United States was a golden cup at one time, even though it was run by the Babylonian system. God used it. United States was a, uh, a, a global outreach, sent missionaries and food and money and so forth to other countries and helped, although they were still doing wicked things. But the majority of it, you know, remember, God chose Israel, United States chose God. It was placed under the hand of God. It used to be a golden cup, even though it was a Babylonian golden cup. Didn't God use Babylon, amen, to destroy other nations and so forth? <clears throat> Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand, not in Satan's hand. That's a difference. That made all the earth drunk. The nations drank her wine, therefore the nations are deranged. Babylon has suddenly fallen and been destroyed. Well for her. Take bomb for her. Perhaps she may be what? Healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go, everyone, to his own country. In other words, come out of Babylon. For her judgment reaches to heaven and is lifted up to the skies. The Lord has revealed our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make the arrows bright. Gather the shields. The Lord has raised up the spirit of the kings of the media. Now listen. I'm going to share with you about what he's talking about. The kings of the media. 
This is what they call the BRICS nations. And I'm going to explain that to you in a second here. For his plan is against the Bab Babylon to destroy it, because it is, the, it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vending, vengeance of his temple. Set up a standard on the walls of Babylon. Make the guard strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. For the Lord has both de devised and done what he spoke against the inhabitants of Babylon. O oh, you who dwell by, the, by many waters, abundant in treasures, your end has come in the measure of your covetousness. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, surely I will fill you with men as with locusts, as they shall lift up a shout against you. Babylon, the fall of Babylon, money changers. Now listen, it's already started to happen. Australian dollar sinks after the British pound falls 30, the lowest ever in, third, in the last 37 years. Now you got to remember the British pound, okay, was twice the value of the U.S. dollar at one time. Now it's less. Tax cut plan pulls British pound 40 years low against the U.S. dollar. Always has a, it always had a higher value. All September 25th crashing began. 30 days later, stock market, that's October 24th, will crush, not collapse. Things will crush, but not collapse yet. Hidden mysteries of God are going to be revealed. The, like the thing that I was sharing with you about, there are things that God is not saying. There was a prophetic word by um, uh, Kim Clement. He said November of this year would be hypnotic. Hypnotic November. Because things are going to happen that are going to cause people almost like, whoa. The kingdoms of the Medes that are British nations. Now, they're called the BRICS nations, B-R-I-C. The BRICS nation. The BRICS nation right now is Brazil, Russia, India, China, South America. Um, South Africa. Africa, and there's other ones coming in now. Argentina, Saudi Arabia, they're all starting to, what, is, what, what did they do? For years they've been gathering gold and silver because they're not globalists. I mean, they're nationalists. Amen? That's why Russia is invading Ukraine because Ukraine is actually part of Russia. And Ukraine is the main hub of the satanic distribution center of child smuggling, money laundering. That's why United States, all of these senators and congressmen are always going back over there. That's why they're sending all kinds of money there, even though they're saying it's for relief. Now NATO is attacking Russia in Ukraine. They're, and, and all of that is funded by the United States. They're sending billions of dollars there. What are they trying to do? They're trying to save their butt. I don't mean United States in general. I mean the political uh, government that is anti-Christ. Amen? So these brick nations, or what they call the Medes, are turning against the United States and every other country that is a globalist. And Isaiah 61. The gross domestic product of countries is so valued. That's why they got to have tangible things to be valued. Of course, you, you know, the, the uh, U.S. government has been just printing money for with no backing. <laughs> and they're like, you know, we're done with this. You got nothing to offer. Your money isn't going to be any good. So Saudi Arabia is no longer selling oil to receive U.S. dollars. 
Russia is no, selling, no longer selling oil to receive, or gas to receive U.S. dollars. Everything must be backed that they purchase by gold and silver. So they're changing everything. This is the beginning of that change by these BRICS nations. And so many are now joining them. So you know there's going to be a battle. They're trying to create a, a war. They're trying to create a, a World War III, but they're not going to succeed. And they'll t say all kinds of things. They're going to try and create all kinds of things because they want to finance the war, <laughs> and then they want to finance the recovery with no backing of gold or silver. Is everybody okay? Isaiah 61. Glory to God. Noah's cycle. In verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord is what? Upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and a day of vengeance of our God that has begun this September 24th. To comfort all who mourn, to counsel those who mourn in Zion and give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be what? Glorified. Again, the Feast of Trumpets has sealed and started these events. And is beginning, look at, there's going to be a final strike for this period of time. And that's the secret thing that God is holding back, this final strike. Nobody knows. But it's going to happen. This event's going to happen. It's going to be a final strike that's going to ripple through the whole world and cause the whole world to change. It is coming before the end of the year. Revelation 17, verse 1. And one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. That's why God says you can't answer mammon, amen, money, and him. You'll hate one and love the other. So he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on the scarlet beast, which was full of n names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. These are known as kings and mountains, or vice versa. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having her hand... In her hand, a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead, a name was written, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and of the uh, abominations of the earth. I saw the, the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with a great amazement. But the angel said to me, Why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which have seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw was, was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. For they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Now think about this. Mountains. These seven mountains are associated with authority and rule controlled by the Babylonian system. Now what would they rule and control? Trade. Political. Media. Think about this. Amen? Education, economic, so forth. 
Um, there's just so much. But seven major ones, the Babylonian system would control. She is known as the harlot that sits on these mountains. Now go to Psalm 97, verse 1. The Lord reigns and let the earth rejoice. Let the multitudes of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his enemies around about him. His lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. So God is going to come through the body of Christ and begin to change all of this stuff. The trade, the medical, the media, the political, amen? The governmental, the military. All of these things are going to melt before the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth, the heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. That is going to be the great event. Let all be put to what? Shame who serve carved images, <clears throat> who boast of idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high above all the earth. You are exalted far above all the gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. Hallelujah. He preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his name. In Daniel chapter 2, 31. You, O king, will watch and behold a great image, this great image whose splendor was excellent, stood before you. Now this is Daniel giving the interpretation of the dream for the king. And its form was awesome. The image, this image's head was of fine gold and its chest and arm of silver, its belly and thighs <coughs> of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly iron and partly clay. You watched while the stone was cut out without hands which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, and the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. And wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream. Now, the crushing of Babylon is just known as its treasures, those mountains. Amen? Everything is about to happen. God is about to crush all the treasures of the enemy. I'm going to go to Revelation 17 again in verse 15. There's something I wanted to mention that is vitally important. The BRICS nations that are five of them right now and more are added are 41% of the world's population. Think about that. Just five of these nations are 41% of the world's population. They have dominion. They have a say. And they're adding more and more and more nations on. By the time we get to, we'll have, just like the word says, ten kings, ten nations. They will turn against the harlot. And they're turning against the harlot right now, five of these nations. It's happening before our eyes. For you and I to be alive at this time is the fulfillment of the book of Revelation. More and more seals will be broke. Right now, we've probably got about three seals broke. But the seals are beginning of a process. Amen? It builds, builds, and builds. And Revelation um, 17 and verse 15. Then he said to me, the waters which you saw 
where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, because they're going to turn against her. That's the Babylonian system. And make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of the one mind and give their kingdom to the beast until the work, words of God are fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the ten kingdoms of the earth. So God is going to put it in their hearts to turn against the harlot. The Babylonian system. We are seeing this begin now. It isn't full blown yet, but it will happen. There will be many things coming down and crushing. And Revelation 18 will close here. In verse 5. For her sins have reached to heaven. The harlot sins. And God has remembered her iniquities. Re render to her just as she rendered to you. And repay her double according to her works. And the cup which she mixed has mixed, mixed double for her. And the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day. And death and mourning and famine, that one day will be a mystery day. All of a sudden, boom. And she will be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord who judges her. Is that powerful? What? So look at the kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxurious with her, will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. What's going to be burning? Dollar bills, let me tell you. It'll be useless. Standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchants anymore. Merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple and silk, scarlet and every kind of <coughs> sister and wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, marble, and cinnamon, and incense, frankincense, and uh, fragrant oils, and wine, and so forth, and so forth. And the bodies and souls of men, horses, chariots, and the bodies and souls of men, the fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you, and all the things which the rich and the splendor have gone from you, and you shall find them no more at all. For the merchant of these things who became rich by her will stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed with fine linen, purple and scarlet, and, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour such great riches came to nothing. Every shipmaster, all who travel by ship, sailing, and many other trading of the sea, stand at a distance. Now, standing at a distance also means ships will still be held back that hold all kinds of merchants and then it will be restored. And cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning and saying, what is like this great city? They threw dust on their heads and cried out weeping, wailing and saying, alas, alas, the great city in which all who had ships and seas became rich by her wealth. For in one hour she has been made desolate. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Then a mighty angel took up a stone, like a great millstone, and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus, with violence, the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be no more. Now, that, a, a great rock in the city causes a suma, tsunami. And it's been prophesied that New York City will be destroyed. 
with a way, a, a, a tsunami. The sound of trumpets. So one of the things the Lord is saying, come out from among her. Come out from among her and be separate, says the Lord, which is vitally, vitally important. Come out from among her. So that's what God is doing. He's bringing us out from among her. He's resetting everything new. And the word also tells us that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the righteous. Somehow, some way, something is going to come our way. You don't have to figure it out. You have to trust it out. Amen? But just know what's getting ready to happen so you don't freak out when things begin to really manifest. Because they will. Things will get stronger. And our challenges will get stronger. Because, you know, the, how, the narrow is what? The gate is narrow. It's difficult. And not many will want to get through that. They're not willing to give up their life. They're not willing to give up their traditions. They've lost sight that they are bought and don't own their life. And that's what we got to maintain. Amen? We do not own this life. It's not ours. It's his. It's always his. So we need to stop making the decisions on assumptions. Amen? And constantly be in contact. Acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways, no matter what you do. Amen? Praise God. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for your word and your preparation and revelation. Let there be revelation to each and every one so that we may retain our restraints of the flesh and be willing to deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Be blessed and stay blessed.